All right. Well, greetings, folks. Um, it's nice to be able to spend an evening with you all and uh, talking about one of our one of uh, our favorite uh, favorite subjects here, and that's making ma maple maple syrup. And I want to thank the council for inviting me to uh, present to you tonight. It'll be a little bit of a different different presentation than we might normally normally have. Well, by the way, it's one of the reasons it's different because this is this is the only slide I've got. Okay, we're gonna just talk and and watch and and um, you know we're a different lot uh, because uh, to us out there in the maple world, this is pretty exciting. All right, when that happens, we're we're pretty happy folks, and we're we're uh, but that's a joke, by the way. We are gonna go for. <laughs> I don't want people leaving me this soon. To go on from that, but uh, but uh, it's just as a little bit of a background and something to, to watch as we're as we're kind of kind of getting into this. Uh, we're not going to tonight uh, teach you how to do something different, which we normally do when we get together in in maple sessions. Okay, how to do it better? If you all logged into Abby Vandenberg's presentation, which was the last, I believe. North American Maple Syrup Council presentation. You got a good dose of, of how we should all be doing it differently, doing it, doing it better. It was a wonderful, wonderful presentation. Okay. We're not going to do that tonight. Um, what we're going to do instead is uh, think a little bit differently, possibly, about why we do it. Okay. We know what we do, we know how to do it, but uh, we're going to think a little bit about, about why, why we do it. Okay, um, this is really one of my favorite videos. I could sit and watch this, watch this all day long. It's just kind of, kind of soothing. So let's let's get in. Let's talk a little bit about that. And um, we'll come on here. The title of the presentation is is Why do you tap maple trees? <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm trying to make this as as interactive as these Zoom things can be, which which they really can't. To, to any any degree, but um, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to before we get too deep into this, uh, get a pencil and paper. I'm I'm, a, I'm an old pencil and paper guy, okay? Because as we go through this, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. If you're a chat guy or chat girl, that that's fine. Uh, you can use that 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 mode of communication. I understand. You know, in today's modern world, with a with a two thumbs and a telephone, you could. Uh, you could, uh, you know, write the next great American novel out there. Uh, you don't need the pencil and paper of, of my day, but I'd like you to have one, all right? Because I'd like you, to, like you to write some things down as we go through, and uh, just three questions as we, we move, on, move on through here. And I'd like you to put them down because hopefully as we start thinking about this, we may um, end up uh, changing some of the way we answer those questions as we go through. Let's, so let's Let's start with the top, the top title of the presentation, the topic of the evening's discussion, and that's uh, why do you tap maple trees? Okay, write it down. Answer that question. Why do you tap maple trees? Either in a chat, on a piece of paper. Just uh, take a minute before we get too deep into this, and uh, let me know why you do this. I mean, it takes a lot of effort. Okay. You're gonna commit a lot of time to it. It's not easy, it's hot, it's dirty, it's hard. Why do you do it? Why do you, why do you tap tr maple trees? Um, so, 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 so do that for me. Just write that, write that down on a piece of paper, write it down in the chat. And uh, we'll, we'll think about that a little bit as we, as we go through the presentation. And, uh, and as we do go through the presentation, uh, we're also gonna address, um, the second question of the of the topic, and that who really cares? Who really cares that you go out and, and do this? All right. You don't have to write anything down about that. That's we'll we'll just kind of evolve that maybe in a little bit of a different way than um, than one might expect as we go through there. But I would like you to think and uh, and 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 put down why why you do this. Okay. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go through it by uh, talking a little bit about uh, some friends of mine, and and after I get done talking about them tonight, I still hope they're friends of mine, because I didn't tell them that uh, I was gonna talk about them. <laughs> that can get you in trouble sometimes, right? 
Uh, and I did over the last week or two, uh, keep constantly asking him to send me slides, funny, different pictures of, uh, of their operation and whatnot. And they never asked me what I was going to do with them. So I guess we're even in that respect. I forgot to tell them what I was doing with them and they never asked what I was doing with them. But this is a group, this is a typical, I say it's a very typical West Virginia. I live in West Virginia. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about me and future generations as we go through here. But I live in West Virginia. This is a real typical West Virginia maple syrup uh, family, okay? Their operation is called Family Roots Farm. Nice, nice name. And if we go from the uh, right to the left here, we'll just introduce you to this, this family that we're going to be, be talking about this evening. On the far right side is uh, Gary Rush. Gary's not a, a member of the family. He's a friend of the family, longtime friend, and, uh, and a part of, of the Family Roots Farm organization. He's a coal miner, all right, active mining. And uh, we got a lot of folks like Gary down here in West Virginia. Good, hardworking folks go to work and get themselves dirty and, and come back. And, and uh, like many of you, after a day's work, what do you do? Make maple syrup, right? Okay, that's how, that's how, the, how the day begins. So we got Gary on the far, far right-hand side. Move on over, and the next is, is Brit, Brittany. And Brittany is the, uh, she's the one who really started this whole operation, the whole maple operation at Family Roots Farm began as a senior class project when she was in high school and is, has grown from there, okay? Next in line is Grady, her son. And there's another one I'd have to Photoshop in here because when I took this photo, their, their daughter, Mila, was not, uh, was not part of the family, but she sure is now. So uh, Grady's there. Her husband, Charlie, is, is next over there as we're working our way to the left. And finally, there's Kathy and Fred, the mom and dad of the, the operation, all right? The family of Family Roots Farm. Now, as I said, this is a, this is a typical operation here in West Virginia. These are the type of folks that I, that I work with. Um, what's their operation like? Well, they've got 550 taps, 300 of them are on, on, on tubing and 150 buckets they, they empty every, every day. They're making about 180 gallons of maple syrup on a on a, on a good year, all right, so that's kind of their, their production. They started the maple operation in 2013, Brittany's senior class project, started on a, you know, a backyard evaporator uh, and, and, and a couple dozen buckets and, and grew to 30 plus, and then, then they had to get bigger, and you know how that goes. Uh, you always find more trees, you, pretty soon you, you can't boil all the sap, so you got to get a different evaporator, kind of typical Typical, typical growth of a, of a family maple operation. And the farm has been in the family since 1775. That's a long time, 1775. Our folks down in West Virginia are pretty tied to their land, all right? And um, that's an example of that, okay? Since before the Revolutionary War, they were settling down here, the Herbie family, on, on this piece of property. So. You can, you can imagine the emotional attachment to the land, the emotional attachment to what they're doing to, uh, to, to, to make a go of it on that land. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty remarkable. Uh, went and, went and we got another Cindy Martell is waiting to be admitted, if you could work, work with her on that. Can I do that? I'll try. Oh, you did it. Okay, good for you. I don't know how to do some of those things. <laughs> All right, so, so the Herbie family and Family Roots Farm is down here in, uh, in Wellsburg, West Virginia. And Wellsburg's on what they call the Northern Panhandle. If you know about West Virginia, there are two parts of the state that you couldn't possibly imagine why they're West Virginia. The Northern Panhandle is one and the Eastern Panhandle is other. It just would make sense that they, they belong to some other states. In fact, from, uh, from Family Roots Farm, you can stand up on a hillside look west at Ohio, and then you can turn around and look east at Pennsylvania, pretty narrow strip of, strip of land that, that, uh, that works its way on up um, towards, towards Lake Erie. All right. And um, I want to talk to you for a little bit about um, a community engagement. All right. How, how you and how we all 
engage and work with our with our communities in this in this maple business. Now, uh, uh, I first question I ask you to write something down on it is why you make maple syrup, and hopefully, you've all you've all done that. We've got uh, some things, some thinking done, and something on paper on that. So now I'd like you to take just a minute, all right, and uh, write down for your maple operation what your community engagement is. Okay, how you how you interact with your with your community. And I'm gonna just sip a cup of coffee here for a little bit, not long, um, and allow you to do that. Scratch something on that paper and you can continue doing it as we, as we continue discussions here on this. We're gonna, we're gonna look at community engagement, um, but you can keep writing and, and making lists or whatever you wanna do on that. I, wanna, I want you to think about why you make maple syrup. And I want you to think about uh, how your operation is, is related to, interacts with, is engaged with, uh, with your community. Okay, that's kind of where, where we're going with this, this whole thing. And we're gonna do it through the example of Family Roots Farm. We're gonna look at, look at their, this, or this little, little family up there, been on the land a long time. We're gonna look at their engagement with uh, Wellsburg, West Virginia. First of all, it's, uh, it's not just a maple operation, it is Family Roots Farm, and they have uh, many different agricultural activities that, uh, that they're engaged with. They have a pick your own strawberry uh, program in the springtime. They've um, got high tunnels where they grow tomatoes, okay, for market. Um, I'm not sure, I can't remember, they told me, but I can't remember if they're doing a CSA or not. But, uh, you know, they're, uh, they're a full, agricultural um, activity here. They're, they're, they've got lots of lots of different, uh, different things going on on their, on their farm uh, from an agricultural, agricultural nature. All right. And um, so we're just gonna go through and look at some of the community engagement that this, this, this little maple operations, I mean, 500 taps, that's not, that's not very big, is it? That's a pretty small, small operation. Well, they're engaged in their community through the way that they uh, donate uh, to community events. Here's a farmer's market members locally sourced and donated by Family Roots Farm, Jim and Jam, you know, Kim's Jams and Jelly. So they're, 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 they're also in the picture, you can see Brittany in there making uh, cotton candy for a community event, different community event. There's, uh, they do have Ruritan clubs and they're supporting that and church activities, uh, always with, uh, hey, we'd like some syrup. We'd like to, you know, get, 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 get some of your product down here and help us with our, with our civic organization, uh, a fundraiser, a dinner, something like that. So these guys are, are actively part of that, part of that game in their, in their community. Um, they're really engaged in education with the community. They're, they they run events to get uh, kids out to their to their sugar bush, uh, to uh, have them have the adventure of being out in the sugar shack to to see the fun of of sap dripping. Remember, I, I like that first video. We could we could watch that for the rest of the night. I'm sure. Um, <coughs> you know, lots of different educational opportunities. Maple family adventure. All right, let's do it. Let's do a maple family adventure and, and invite people out to our sugar bush and engage them in, uh, in what we're doing out here. They're also involved in a program that um, we're working with, uh, Maple in the Classroom program in West Virginia. We've got, I believe, over 20 schools now involved in this. And, and um, each of those schools gets paired up with a local producer. And the producer, that's Brittany up there, comes in and talks about uh, making maple syrup to a class. Now, if it's a kindergarten class, they may draw maple leaves, okay? This is, a, this is a high school environmental science class, and they'll be talking about the bricks of sugar and the physiology of sap flow and all, all, all whatnot that would be appropriate to a high school environmental science class. Uh, each of these classrooms, by the way, in the Maple in the Classroom program, is um, they all tap maple trees. They all get an allotment of buckets, okay, and then taps and the 
producer comes out and works with them on tapping trees on the school property. They collect the sap, store it in the school, take it to the producer's um, operation, okay, to the Family Roots Farm, and uh, exchange that sap for an equal quantity of, of syrup and get a tour of the farm. So it's a two-way thing. We got, the, we got the producers in the classroom, and, and then we've got the students coming out to the, to the various sugaring operations. More community engagement, more education, a lot of education here. Family Roots Farm is, is, is one organization in West Virginia. They do a, a really good job of uh, farm to table dinners. They'll host these during the summer. And you can see they're using a lot of their, their products, including maple syrup here, and a lot of their products, inviting people to come out, beautiful and you know, nice country scene, come on out of the city, come out of the suburbs, have a, have a, have a special dinner, okay? Um, learn what we're doing, be on the farm. These farm to, farm to table dinners, real, real popular. And Family Roots Farmers um, is solidly into that. They're, they do a lot of that. Again, community engagement, inviting people out, getting folks out there to see, um, see what they're up to, how they do things. They have maple breakfasts during the sugaring season. So if we're gonna invite people to come out in the summertime for a beautiful you know, evening of uh, touring the farm and, and seeing how potatoes are grown and having a nice dinner, well, during the maple season, we're going to invite, they're going to invite people on out. Uh, for, we're, we're boiling sap, the evaporator's going, come on in the sugar shack. Let's, let's have a pancake breakfast. Okay. Um, again, community involvement, getting, 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 getting engaged with the, with the folks that, uh, that are their friends and neighbors and, 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 and whatnot in the, in the village. Okay. Another good community, community engagement. I think it's real important. Okay, we have our Maple, Maple Mountain State Maple Days every year. Okay, coming up next uh, March nineteenth, uh, COVID permitting, of course. Uh, uh, we're all, you know, very hopeful we'll be done with this uh, th problem by then. But Family Roots Farm, as well as many many other sugaring operations in West Virginia, take part in our Maple Days, and I'm sure that your states uh, do a similar thing, where they, where they, you know, everybody invites people on out to their, to their sugaring operation during these special, special times. And they boil sap, but man, isn't that disgusting looking stuff? Have you ever boiled? I mean, you know, you ought to throw things away when it gets to looking like that. That's green and ugly. Oh man, you wouldn't invite anybody out to see that unless it wasn't maple, unless it was sorghum, okay? So they put in a couple acres of sorghum and uh, invite people out in the, in the fall to help harvest the sorghum. Sorghum's a traditional crop, it's a traditional sugar crop down here in the, the southern part of, uh, part of the country. And, uh, and, 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 and let's make, a, let's make, a, let's make a, an activity out of it. So they get all sorts of people to come out, learn about sorghum, learn about the history of sorghum, okay? And it's, it's really a good idea. I mean, uh, how many of you all get to run your evaporator in September and October, not very many, unless you're making sorghum, and then you're taking the same equipment that you've purchased for your maple operation, you turn it into making sorghum syrup. You got another product to put on the on the shelf, okay? Using your equipment again, and another engagement with the community. People can come back out, see what's going on, learn something, okay? Education, learn something. Lots of community and engagement, and then of course. You know, hopefully each of you all have um, opportunities to uh, invite in special groups, groups that call you up and say, we'd like to bring our scout troop out, okay? Uh, we're a college, either in the area or a college coming down, you know, touring, and we'd like to stop on by. Could we, could we have a tour? You bet, okay? Nutfield International Farming Scholars, these are people from around the world learn how to put up tubing, learning what maple trees are, okay? So, um, you know, hopefully we all have those, those types of opportunities and we welcome these groups on out and engage with those, with those, those communities. Um, being engaged with community. Community engagement is more than um, simply inviting people out and charging for dinner, which is a fine thing to do, by the way, all right? But it's also being engaged in the community in which you're 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 part of. 
So we're going to think a little bit about that aspect of uh, a maple sugaring operation, how how the how the how the operation can engage in its in community. Well, the obvious ways is there's Kathy and Grady at Joanne Fabrics. Okay, well they made some money selling you know selling those pancake breakfasts. Now they're spending some in their community uh, buying buying things. Myla, the newest member of the family, I didn't have a picture. She really likes to eat. Okay, so she's off there. Uh, groceries at Sam's Club. These are the pictures I asked them to send me this last two weeks. I thought, I'm sure they thought it was really weird. What's he going to do with this stuff? Um, they buy gas at the local gas, gas station, putting money back into the community, um, supporting the community that is supporting them, right? Okay, this is, this is, this is, this is part of the game, and it's a good, it's a good part of it, and something we should think about, okay? How we be part of a community as, as well as be there in a community taking advantage of our location with that community for our benefits. We got to look at it both ways. Okay. Charlie, Charlie's a man after my own heart, man. He's got some extra cash in his pocket. He has right for the hardware store. Got to look at all those new tools and think about all the projects he could get involved with. Again, you know, local, buying local, being part of a being part of a community. And although we hate that word, um Brittany, the family, they pay school taxes, uh, property taxes, supporting the, you know, the local, local uh, community activities, uh, supporting uh, the daycare centers, supporting the roads, the playgrounds, all those things uh, play back into their, into their community. They're, they're, they're being part of and engaged in that community. And as you can see, this type, this type of stuff pays off. Look at that sign over there, okay? Family Roots, local maple syrup and sugar products at a gas station, all right? Um, you can bet your the bottom dollar where those guys buy their gas from, right? I mean, it's, just, it's an exchange, it's going back and forth. You can go to the stores in Wellsburg and they've got their product on the shelves there, all right? Um, product on the shelves means that that uh, merchant at that store can sell it, make a profit, they're making a profit. It's, it's, all, it's, all, uh, it's all coming coming around and around in that, in that community. My local economic development folks say, say buy local, okay? They say that every dollar spent locally cycles around that community um, in Joanne's Fabrics or, or the food store or the, the hardware store, circles around that community and the, and the people who are employed there and how they pay taxes and how they spend their money and equals $10 worth of good for that, that community. That's pretty impressive. It keeps going round and around and around, and every buck turns into $10 worth of, worth of benefit from that, that community as it works its way through, that, through, through the community, from one person to another, from employing different people. It all, it all, it all helps to strengthen that, that community. But there's another way, okay? This, this is where I like to shop, all right? You can get anything here and it's so cheap, man, you wouldn't believe. I don't know if you have one of these, but you can actually get maple syrup there. And the price of this stuff, it would probably pay you to buy this maple syrup and just repackage it in your bottles. You can get it so, so cheap, okay? Uh, it's just another way of doing things, of course. This is kind of what I like to do. But when you look at the economics of it, what you do is you see that... Um, that money's not circulating 10 times around the community. Some of it's circulating a little bit, but a lot of it's going out to Bentonville, Arkansas, the headquarters of, uh, of Walmart out there. It's leaving your community. Uh, community development, uh, economic development, people talk about this as being leakage, okay, as, as things move. Now, we're, we're all shop at Amazon. There's always, always leakage, okay, but we try, we should try to Try to um, go the other way, cycle that money in your community as to as to having it leave. Now I will tell you, I've been to Bentonville out there, Fayetteville, Springdale. They're wonderful towns. They got great schools. Okay, they got a swimming pool out there that's so big and a wonderful recreation area. And every time you check out at Walmart and you hear that clink clink of the cash register, that's the folks in Bentonville saying thank you for sending all your money out here. We really are living the good life. All right. So think about that. Just a clink, a clink, a clink. It's thank yous, thank yous from the folks at Bentonville. Good people, okay. But we sometimes might be better off um, keeping some of that uh, circulating around in our communities as 
as best as best we can. I want to take a, a little bit of time now and take a take a look at a bigger bigger picture because what are what we're getting at here is um, and it, hopefully it's starting to come apparent is that is that the who really cares are are the people that uh, you interact with in your community the folks that you're you're taking the fun, funds that you're 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 gaining from your for your activity your your business and plowing it back into your community well those folks those folks care that you do what you do it's important for them if you weren't doing it that wouldn't be happening so joanne fabrics they care that the herbies are making maple syrup okay but i want to take a, a little bit of a bigger picture beyond beyond the you know that your neighbors and your community and your 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 backyard there and kind of take a look at at things from a different perspective just a little bit as we kind of figure out who really cares you know, if you what you do and why you do it out there. And um, this is just, I just picked these out. I had some help in the office, but uh, this is the, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Do they care that sap is dripping in your bucket? Well, what do they do? Their role says they're from expanding health coverage to creating healthy communities. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation is committed to helping everybody in America have an equal opportunity to pursue a healthier life. Well, what's that got to do with maple syrup? Well, they fund a program in West Virginia. This is a national foundation. And I'm sure they fund one in Michigan and fund one in your states as well, called Keys for Healthy Kids, is a partnership of community stakeholders whose goal it is to, is to implement healthy eating and active living policy and environmental change initiatives that will support healthier communities for children and families across West Virginia. What's that got to do with maple syrup? Healthy eating? Healthy, healthy alternative sweeteners? Isn't that what you guys do? Okay, isn't that what we're all involved with? Active living? Okay, come on out to the sugar bush. Let's, let's walk around the woods. Let's measure some trees. Let's collect some buckets. That's, uh, that's, that's you know, these guys just might be interested in, in knowing about you. And I think uh, all of us, ought to uh, reach out to them and let them know that, that we're out there because, because we're doing what they're, what they're trying to promote. We're part of, part of their goal and their mission. And if we are, um, we should let them know that we're out here, okay? Uh, and, and, and because if they do, then, then they will care that we make maple syrup. They'll care that we're giving people this, this healthy eating uh, sweetener alternative. Oh, that's one. Okay, they're involved in health. Uh, here's another group, the Nature Conservancy. Do you think they care if there's, there's sap dripping from you into your buckets? Well, what's their mission? It says, our mission is to conserve the lands and waters on which all life depends. To achieve this, we must boldly address the biodiversity and climate crisis over the next decade by maximizing our ability to affect change between now and 2030, we can shape a brighter future for people on our planet. That's a pretty good thing to do. We all want to do that. And they've got a particular program called the Family Forests, an untapped powerhouse in climate mitigation. Quote, small landowners are often excluded from the climate conservation and carbon credit market, which could mean sustained revenue for families and realization of meaningful mitigation practices. Hey, there. That's interesting, isn't it? I mean, we're all small farmers, okay. We're landowners that own sugaring operations, woodlands, okay. In the last two weeks, and well, last Friday, I had uh, representatives from the Nature Conservancy out of the sugar bush, and they're interested in talking to them because what they're interested in this program, what they're what they're, what they're willing to do is they're willing to to pay people like sugar bush operators, okay to not cut down their trees, which most sugar bush operators would just as soon not do, okay? Um, they're, 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 they don't say you have to cut down any tree, but they wanna grow trees into bigger size classes. We wanna grow maple trees into bigger maple trees. That gives us more sap, more, more sweetness. So, so there's some things here that are complementary between this carbon credit program that the uh, Nature Conservancy's got going on and, and, and sugaring operations. 
In fact, in the last month, this is the second time I've taken somebody from the Nature Conservancy out, introduced them to a sugar sugar bush owner who's who's possibly interested in this. They're gonna they're gonna if they sign up, if it's a good deal for them, they'll write them a check every year not to cut down their trees, just to let them grow. Sounds like a good deal deal to me if I was in in you know in that in that business. So so here we go now now. They probably don't know you guys all exist out there. Um, we've offered them a, a chance to talk to our, our syrup makers here in West Virginia, and that will, will happen over time. Um, we almost had a symposium this fall, and they almost had a table at it to explain their program to our sugar makers because, they're, they're, you know, maybe in the people in the maple business, they, they want to have big trees. And these guys interested in carbon, carbon uh, offset credits, they want to have big trees. Let's see if we can work together on that. Let's see if we can make that, make that happen. Here's another group that's interested in, potentially interested in what you're all doing. Um, this is our West Virginia Food and Farm Coalition. I just learned Winton works for a similar organization, his day job when he's not, uh, not helping uh, promote the, the maple industry through the council's work. Building resilient and equitable food systems in West Virginia. We work to build the local food and agricultural system in West Virginia in a way that provides viable income to farmers and local food businesses and ensures all residents have access to locally produced food. Hey, we're farmers, right? Okay. We're all trying to get, you know, have a viable income. Um, we're producing locally, local foods. Okay. We're part of a local food network. Okay the Food and Farm Coalition, okay. Uh, do they know we're here? Has anybody ever asked them into uh, one of our meetings to talk about the Food and Farm Coalition, what they're doing, how we can collaborate, work with them possibly? Can't see why not. We're doing what they want done. And uh, so why shouldn't we be working together to, to make it happen? Okay, so what I'm getting at is that is that at the community level, we can engage. The more we engage, the more we have people who care about what we do, friends, neighbors, people from town. The more we let people know what we do, who are at looking at a bigger picture from health to food to, to environment, and we're doing all those things, we're, we're building a constituency of folks who, who care what we do. And um, I think that's important. I think it's important that people know what we do. And it's important that they care what we do. Okay, we're doing good things out there, folks. Let's not hide our light under a, under a bushel. All right, let's let them know. Let's let's start talking to these folks. All right, so next question. Uh, and I told Winton sometime through this presentation, we're going to uh, digress a little bit and tell you a little bit about Future Generations University, all right? And um, it is a fully in accredited academic institution in West Virginia. We go through the same uh, accreditation program as Ohio State and Penn State with the Higher Learning Commission in, in, um, in Chicago. Uh, it's a program that offers a master's degree, and we have students in that master's degree as we speak, studying, okay? And it's a program that has, uh, has uh, offices and activities in some pretty interesting places in the world. The mission, the mission of this organization for which I am part of, okay, it says Future Generations promotes research, learning, and action towards inclusive and sustainable community change worldwide. Okay. Now, there's lots of folks involved in the maple business, lots of different organizations supporting the development of the industry. I would be willing to wager that Future Generations is the only maple organization with an office in Kabul, Afghanistan, which by the way is still open, and an office in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, okay? And the interesting thing about those two offices is our, our, our country directors working there, they know all about making maple syrup, okay? <laughs> because one of my friends and, and colleagues, Luke Taylor Ide, who's on this, uh, listening to this, uh, um, he's told them all about it, uh, and, and they know all about our program and, and, and maple syrup. Okay, so 
we got a program working on community change in Afghanistan. We got a program working on community uh, development, sustainable community change in Port-au-Prince. We got a program working on sustainable community change in Appalachia. That's where I'm located, right? Down here in Appalachia. Uh, probably a little, little south for many of you guys, but, um, but it's uh, an interesting area. We got a lot of folks like, uh, like Gary, we saw him on the first slide, a lot of coal miners down here. More and more of those folks are um, looking for something else to do as the mining, mining declines. All right, making maple syrup's a good thing to do. Gary likes it, all right. Although his mind's still doing, doing well. And um, within our Appalachian program, we have, a, we have a tree syrup initiative. We have tree syrup initiatives, okay. Um, and, uh, and, and why do we have tree syrup initiatives? Well, according to Mike Farrell in his book, the great state of West Virginia has got more maple trees than does the great state of Vermont. That's a lot of, lot of maple trees, okay? Um, why not utilize that resource? And when I say we have tree syrup initiatives, we, um, we are real interested in promoting the development of the maple industry down here and the walnut industry through black walnut syrup and the sycamore industry through sycamore syrup, okay? Uh, to me, uh, if we can expand the tree syrup an industry in general, okay, and we can, we, can, we, can, we can expand the market and we can expand the range across the country of which we can have people tapping trees and creating that locally produced sap and syrup products, the better off we are, right? I mean, we are the North American Maple Syrup Council, but we all do the same things, whether you're tapping a walnut tree, almost the same thing, <laughs> or a sycamore tree. Uh, so we're involved in some research involved with that, and we're in, involved in, in, in promoting it, extension associated with that. <clears throat> the picture on the lower left is me. My wife says that's the best picture ever taken of me. And that is correct. My head is in the tree, okay? I, uh, I, uh, my career has been in, in, in forestry and, and natural resource education. And uh, I like to tell people, I come to the world from the standpoint of what the trees are thinking and how the trees are acting and what the trees do. I tell people I've spent my career basically he helping students get their heads into trees. So I thought uh, I should uh, put my own in one sometime to see what it was like in there. I've been at this for a while. Okay, I, I was teaching students at the University of Michigan about the physiology of maple sap flow in 1973. So I've been thinking about this, teaching it, engaged in it in one way or the other for, for a, good deal, a good deal of time. After doing a stint with the State Department of Agriculture, I migrated over to, to future generations and, and uh, basically helped them uh, uh, move into this tree syrup initiative, which has been really a, a growing concern for us. And we're very proud of where we are uh, as we work with you all and the other uh, you know, institutions engaged in, in promoting, promoting this, this wonderful, wonderful industry. In West Virginia, as we've done this, as, we, as, we've, as we've developed this, okay, and as we've started to think about this uh, maybe a little differently, we found that there are lots of organizations that want to get on board, okay, are there to help uh, and, and want to uh, want to want to help us uh, do what what we all like to do and what you all like to do. All right. Uh, let's take a look at this. We've got uh, we've gotten support uh, for our maple initiatives, a lot of support from a regional foundation, the Benedin Foundation. We'll work our way around to the right. Uh, WVU, Jamie Schuler and, 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 and his, his program up there, uh, forestry program at WVU, you are involved. In fact, right now, we have four higher institutions of higher education in West Virginia that offer courses. And part of that course is the students make maple syrup. That's pretty cool. Four of them down here engaged in one way or another uh, making syrup. WVU Extension is, 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 is sees this as a way to, to uh, help our small family farmers, those folks who've been at it since 77, 75, still trying to make a go of it. Future Generations is in. We've gotten support from the One Foundation. 
local local organization wanted to help us out. Virginia Tech down in Virginia, they're in, in, engaged. There's a we have a um, a group called Experience Learning up here. It's an environmental education organization. They have run a maple in the syrup maple in the classroom program for a number of years. They're they're involved in in educating students uh, in STEM uh, activities, STEM curriculum. Well, heck, science, math, uh, you know, uh, technology. That that looks like a, a sugar shack to me. Think about all the ways you can you can teach those those uh, those skills. USDA, we've gotten a lot of support from USDA through their uh, SARE program and now recently through a few, number of ACER access grants. West Virginia Department of Agriculture, really, really supportive of, the, of what's going on down here. We had our, um, we, we built a, a sugar shack on, on, on wheels. We call it our SAP mobile. We took it on down to the state uh, fair. We were down there two weeks and our Department of Agriculture Commissioner, Kent Leinhardt, showed up every day at that, at that sugar shack down there in wheels um, to, to introduce people. He introduced our state senators to us uh, from the Congress and other folks came by and, and was really proud of, of what's, what's happening with maple down here in, in West Virginia. And they're very supportive, okay? Because they know what we're doing and they, they wanna make it, make it work. But look what's in the middle of this diagram, okay? In the middle is maple syrup producers and the West Virginia Maple Syrup Producers Association. All right. Uh, producers, great. Associations, better, okay? When producers start working together in associations, people listen. You can, you can, you can go and, and talk to the Department of Ag, knock on the commissioner's door, and if you get an appointment, tell them what you're doing, that's all fine. Thank you, have a cup of coffee. If you got an association, you get you 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 you, you get you're going to get more interest. Okay, ah, oh, you guys are organized. You're really going to go somewhere with this. How can we how can we engage? What can we what can we do? Okay, and just like the association is so important. I mean, what, I remember when the association we went up to Lemley a number of years ago and set up this wonderful booth with 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 all this you know nice displays and whatnot. The Department of Ag helped us up. And I remember the guy from the New York State Association was set up next to us and he said, man, look, you guys are really top flight. How many members you got? I said, we got 12 members. <laughs> he almost flipped. <laughs> okay, now we got 65, which is still nothing compared to my Ohio friends or Pennsylvania friends, but we're growing, okay? And people are taking, taking, taking interest and taking note, note of that. Well, just like the association is so key to engaging what I call a network or a constellation of different organizations that can help us out and collaborate and work and make this all work. Likewise, the North American Maple Syrup Council, the guys who asked me to do this for you tonight or at you or to you, whatever the case may be, is so important uh, to us at the, at the national level, okay? having that voice, being able to talk with one voice and, and work together on issues at that level, that what the council is doing is uh, takes it, ratchets it up a notch. And there, believe me, there are so many important things that the council takes on. Many times our producers may not see them or even know about them, but if we weren't doing them, there'd be, there'd be, um, there'd be, there'd be questions, believe me, like the great issue of added sugar. What does that mean? We don't put sugar in our syrup, but we came close to having that on our label. Probably not the best thing for sales, right? All right, so we got this constellation going in down here. And now we're, we're, we're roll, rolling into the end of this, good, because we're rolling into the end of the hour. But I want you to go back, and I'm going to ask this question again. I ask you to get a piece of paper out, and I want you to tell me why you tap maple trees. Same question we started with, okay? We started with the question, why do you tap maple trees? Then we went on, we had a second question. Um, you know, how do you engage with community, okay? How do you do that? What's your, what's your game? Now we've talked for you know, 45 minutes at this point and um, you're not gonna tap your maple trees any different. If you listen to Abby's presentation, you certainly would. But I, I, I said, I, we're gonna try to, Think about why we do what we do maybe a little differently, okay? So write that down. Why do you tap maple trees? I'm gonna give Kawan here and, and finish this up with a, with a, with a, couple, of, um, a couple of 
ways that one might answer that, okay? Why do you tap maple trees? You could say, because sharing my skills and the knowledge of the forest and syrup making with my neighbors enriches my community. All those educational opportunities, all those people coming in, learning something. They come because they wanna learn something, right? They wanna see something. Well, you're sharing that, okay? And, uh, and that's maybe, that's, that's look, with, with 500 trees, Family Roots Farmers doing as much sharing as they are making, right? Take a look at the, look at, look at how they're there. Okay, that might be a good answer to that. Okay. Or you could say, I tap maple trees so I can provide a healthy alternative sweetener for my customers or my neighbors or my community. Well, that's interesting, okay. Boy, with an answer like that, you're gonna have people wanna know, okay, well, how do you do this? Uh, how are you providing this healthy sweetener? What, what's, how healthy is it? Why is it healthy? Okay, gotta have some answers, but, but that's a good reason to tap maple trees, okay? For whatever reasons, this is the different way you could answer that question when somebody next asks you. Maybe I'm the only person who will ever ask you that. Maybe it's so self-evident that we didn't really need to do this, but there's an answer you could get, all right? Or you could say, why do you tap maple trees? I tap maple trees to help revitalize America's rural economies. Whoa, that's big time, isn't it? All right, West Virginia, uh, you know, we've got, we've got some rural economies down here that could use a revitalization. We're ground zero of the opioid epidemic. We've got coal, coal miners, many of them out of work. We need, some, we need some revitalization down here, almost as much as Afghanistan does in some days, all right? And what you're doing is, helping to revitalize these economies as you're producing a product, okay, that you're selling locally and you're, you're cycling that money through your community. You answer the question like this, people are gonna pick up and say, tell me about it. How do you do that, okay? Uh, you're part of, the, part of the solution here, okay? And, um, and it's an answer that as you rephrase your question, okay, rephrase your answer to answers similar, not those three, but similar to, to what we're talking about here. As you do that, you're gonna find that there are more and more organizations out there that are gonna say, hey, how can we get involved? How can we help? How can we you know, make this happen? Um, because as you're answering the questions in that way, you're, you're, you're relating to, to large issues that, um, that, are, that are important to large organizations. All right. So uh, to finish things up, and who really cares? You're doing this, who really cares? And my answer to that is they all do, okay? All the people, all the organizations you interact with, you touch, that uh, you support, that support you, they all care about you making maple syrup, you doing what you do, because it's, 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 it's enriching their lives, it's enriching their community, it's reaching, helping them to reach their goals of their organization. And, um, and I think we can be pretty happy about that. All right. <laughs> so I believe I am done. Wenton, I hope that, uh, that uh, does the bill. <laughs> That was great, as always, Mike. I want to give folks a chance to chime in, though. You you asked a lot of good questions, and I'm curious if folks want to take a moment to share, uh, unmute yourself, turn on your video, and and uh, either react to Mike's questions or more broadly to, to what he was talking about. So, when this is Cindy, I'm gonna I'm gonna chime in and ask a question. Um, as you look at the North American Maple Syrup Council and some of the things that Mike has presented this evening as initiatives within the maple world. Um, do you see some of the synergies or, or needs that, that we have that possibly other maple regions would have in terms of consumer education, um, information and knowledge about maple as a sweetener, those kinds of things? And, and do you have any upcoming initiatives or or thoughts on, on what we could do to further um, make the connection between the two organizations? 
I think there's a lot of room for for more alliances between either the state associations or the larger national international organizations and other uh, ag groups. I think that you know uh, Mike mentioned a few that were specifically related around the environment. One thing that I really like is uh, that, that I don't think you did mention is uh, Audubon um, has their uh, their bird friendly forest uh, initiative, and you know again. Uh, connecting, uh, you know, you might make the assumption that people who care about the environment, care about trees, are automatically going to understand that that, you know, that, that the maple industry can be supportive of that. And I think there's there's people out there who have a vague sense of what maple syrup is, and they think we're just vampires sucking on maple trees until they're dry. Um, and but but making those kinds of interesting alliances, I think, uh, gives us an opportunity to. Uh, tap into some organizations that are much, much bigger than we are and that have a much bigger reach and therefore uh, have the potential to, to help us get our message out in ways that we otherwise might not be available, uh, might not be available to us because we're so, you know, we're a relatively small industry. Um, so that's, that's one thing that strikes me right off the bat. I think that there are opportunities to connect better with other agricultural uh, organizations as well. I know that some of the state associations have good relationships with Farm Bureau, for instance. Others don't work with Farm Bureau. Um, I think that there's uh, a, a big specialty foods industry that, again, some folks have gotten uh, good at tapping into and others have not. So, I, you know, I think that uh, you know, sugar makers is, it's a pretty small set of, sh of sugar makers that are, uh, that are full-time, that that's all they do is think about maple. Most of them are also farmers or they've got other day jobs or they're, 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 uh, they're, they're doing other off farm work. Um, and I think it's incumbent upon the associations to figure out how to make those connections for people because individually as, as, as business people, as sugar makers, um, folks don't have the time or, or, or resources uh, or, or connections to do that. Um, and so I think the, what the council can do is do a better job of helping the, associate, the state associations figure out how to build those relationships and how to translate them into, uh, in, into ultimately what's you know, better outreach and better sales for sugar makers. Thank you, awesome. Others thoughts, questions, brilliant ideas. Yeah, ben Bobstaff here. Um, yeah. You mentioned that uh, West Virginia has more maple trees than the state of Vermont. Um, so just being in business myself, I run numbers and things like that. Obviously, Vermont produces the vast majority of the syrup in the U.S., somewhere around 40 percent-ish. Well, let's pretend we can get West Virginia on fire like Vermont is. What does that do to the industry? Is there that much room to port to grow? Or, I mean, obviously it's gonna take time, it's not gonna to happen tomorrow, but, but is there a potential that if someone wanted to sink money into the industry, that there is room for that much growth? Or how much time might that much growth need? I know that's a question for Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Oh, I knew it was a question for Winton. <laughs> I mean, I would say, you know, the, the, the per capita consumption of maple syrup in the United States is three ounces per person per year. I, you know, that's one pancake for me. It's probably similar for you guys or your, your morning coffee or however it is you do your, you use your syrup most. I think there's definitely room for growth. Any, any growth in production needs to be coupled with growth in marketing and, and finding new markets. We can sell all the syrup we want hand to hand in our own, in our own community. Um, but you know, the challenge is that the areas that are far, far away from the maple region, think California, think Texas, think the, the Pacific Northwest, you know, it's not as common there. And, and what are we doing to make it more common there so that that demand grows? The, the key, what you said, Winton, is we want to grow the industry. We want to grow the markets. There's certainly potential out there for both. Lots of trees in West Virginia, lots of pancakes in, in, in Oregon, okay? And we got we to work on both sides of that for sure. 
Right, yeah. Uh, this is Darren Kibler. I'm, uh, I'm actually an extension for uh, Wisconsin. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, to go back to, to, to Benjamin's, there's a thing there is, uh, I get that question a lot, especially with my local producers. Uh, you know, they're talking about their competition and, you know, is there room for growth? And they think about local markets. You got to remember the competition for maple syrup is Cheerios. It is an alternative of uh, foods. And so we need to think at, at a much larger scale and it goes back to growing the demand, the, you know, and you're competing against other options to maple syrup as a sweetener, as, you know, part of a breakfast food or, or otherwise. So, uh, by the way, uh, we are the sleeping giant of maple uh, up here in uh, North, I'm in the Western UP and Northern uh, Wisconsin. Um, you guys should be afraid about the number and size of our maple forest stuff here. <laughs> and they have been underutilized for many years because of- But let me say, markets. Vermont is not shaking in his boots because West Virginia has learned how to get <laughs> No time soon. <laughs> but uh, what I, I, I really wanted to talk about um, is what, you know, an important part of um, that you kind of touched on a little bit is identity and a community's identity, a state's identity. I work for the dairy state. When you have an identity uh, associated, policymakers spend money on the industry. You know, Vermont, they spend money because they are known as the maple. You know, policymakers spend money for that. In the dairy state, they will throw money left and right to help support the dairy industry. So as you grow your businesses, it's very important that you include the policymakers and you show the identity uh, because that's where you're going to get a lot of regulatory and policy and, and support monetarily. As, um, and so that's a, a very important thing to think about as you're, you're talking about growing. And, and Vermont didn't it. just become the maple state and Wisconsin become the dairy state. They, that was proactively promoted and developed. Right. Yeah, over a long time. Yeah, and that's also a good example. Um, getting getting back to uh, to Cynthia's question earlier about um, alliances. So you know, Wisconsin is the dairy state. Um, there's also a lot of maple producers there. A lot of a lot of dairy producer. A lot of a lot of farm uh, dairy farmers are also maple producers. Um, you know, you're dealing with this interesting uh, trucking issue right now about uh, what what uh, the dairy haulers are allowed to do and and maple haulers are not, even though you're both haul and liquid. Um, it's, it's a really good example of, of you build up those alliances early so that you have strength in numbers and, and, and strength in, uh, in political power uh, when you run into challenges like that. I just Other thoughts, to, questions, less. I just wanted to thank Mike for a real thought provoking uh, presentation tonight. Uh, I think you hit a lot of key points. Uh, I've always looked at West Virginia as always called it the canary in the coal mine. Uh, what happens down there in the maple industry probably is what we ought to be looking at and watching in the future. And when we talk about climate change, and I'm not bashful about saying climate change anymore, because after what we've seen over the last 48 months, we probably ought to get get that idea that something's not happening out of our heads. Uh, I'll, that's, I'll get off my soapbox on that one. But the reason being that you, you point the fact that you're, what you're doing as far as connecting with uh, the, uh, uh, the Nature Conservancy, taking a look at preserving woods preserving trees and the importance of what we're doing with that, not only in West Virginia, but across the state of Ohio and all the other states that are involved. Uh, we know that they're gonna do a pretty good job of that up in New England and that, but I, I, my worry right now is, is down here in the states like Ohio and that we don't have a vast timber resources. But I think we all need to be looking at this and the maple industry not only supports the communities, it supports the environment. And that is a very key issue today. And one that uh, I hope that everybody recognizes. I think you brought some very good points out tonight, Mike. 
I, I really appreciate this presentation. Good allies in the environmental movement, folks. Others thoughts? Everybody already moved on to supper? Mike's eating. Yeah, I'm having grapes. <laughs> Local grapes. <laughs> they are, in fact. <laughs> Last call for any thoughts. Otherwise, we'll say good night. All right. Well, thank you all for spending some time. And Winton, thanks for the opportunity to, to think through this. It, uh, it's been fun for me. Thanks so much, Mike. Really appreciate the conversation. Have a good evening, everybody. Yeah. Uh, Winton, question for you. Where's this recording going to be um, staged? It's going to be, it'll ultimately be on Future Generations University's YouTube channel, and we'll, uh, we'll link to it in the next issue of the Digest. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. You bet. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Have a nice evening, folks. Bye.